Hello everyone, today, we're going to talk about the science fiction film called John Carter. Prepare yourself for some spoilers. A conflict between humanoids is taking place somewhere else. They fight aboard airships with blue sides and red sides. And suddenly some blue ray destroys all the ships except the ship of Prince Sab then of Zodanga. Three bald people come on a crimson spacecraft and approach General Sab then. They give him a blue mesh gadget that allows him to shoot energy bolts, but when he tries to shoot the three figures, he is blown backwards. The three figures are amused. They are Thern's, goddess representatives, and she has chosen to support Prince Sabden of Zodanga in this fight. Madai Shang, the Thern commander, motions for him to put his sacred new powers to the test. The battle is won when the general shoots energy bolts to the enemy ships. In the busy streets of New York City in 1881, a guy eludes another guy. He looks to be worried. In the end, he manages to elude him. Then he goes inside one of the buildings. Inside, he pays an additional fee to send a telegram express. At that time, he is being watched by the person who was following him. A young guy receives a message from his uncle, pleading for him to rush and save him. He arrives by the train and met by his uncle's butler. The young guy walks to his uncle's vast estate, where a lawyer explains that his uncle, John Carter, died unexpectedly and left everything to him. The lawyer shows him his uncle's crypt, and he says that this is an unusual crypt that can only be opened from the inside. He hands an ancient diary to the young guy, Edgar Rice Burroughs. The young guy begins to read once the lawyer has left. After the Civil War, the narrative begins in Arizona. John Carter, a distinguished former Confederate Army captain, is searching for gold. The villagers appear to dislike him. The main character is trying to borrow something from the bartender. They do not believe that he will be able to repay the debt in time and begin to threaten him. John proves the opposite by showing a small bar of gold that he found. Then Colonel Powell appears and takes him into custody. Colonel Powell of the cavalry attempts to compel Carter to battle the Apache. Because people like him are needed, John tells the colonel that he has fought enough, and it is all. Carter refuses to comply, and after numerous attempted escape attempts, he charms a jail guard, knocks him unconscious, and rides Colonel Powell's horse out of Fort Grant. Powell and the rest of the cavalry pursue, but are forced to call it quits when they find Carter is carted up with a mounted Apache war band. Both parties are armed and suspicious, and the language barrier adds to the tension. A shootout soon ensues. Carter seizes the opportunity to flee, but Colonel Powell is wounded, and Carter stays to assist the injured man. He is taking the colonel with him. The two flee into a box canyon and discover a little cave. The Apaches are chasing them. When the Apache sees something on the rock above the cave, they swiftly retreat. Carter returns to where the Apache was standing, perplexed, and discovers the spider emblem on the rock face. He leaves Powell by the entrance and ventures deeper into the cave to explore. Carter discovers a room with weird symbols and gold-lined walls and roof. He is so engrossed that he misses the man who approaches behind him, and Powell is almost too late to warn him. The stranger is a bald guy in a gleaming gown with a knife that appeared out of thin air. Carter manages to shoot the bald guy and finds that he has retrieved a blue glowing pendant during the battle. Carter picks it up and repeats the words he overheard the other say, and he finds himself in a foreign desert. He gets to his feet and wonders how the dark cave suddenly changed to a bright yellow desert. Carter attempts to walk but trips and appears to float. He takes a few minutes to figure out how to walk in this odd new surroundings. The gravity on Mars is significantly lower than he is used to, but he is unaware of this. He walks over to a neighboring hill. He hears a strange sound and discovers a clutch of eggs developing green six-limbed newborns. He is ready to depart, distraught, when he spots a swarm of green monsters coming. They ride gigantic creatures and are equipped with rifles. Suddenly one of them stealthily approach closer and try to attack him, but Carter jumps up and surprises this green creature with his abilities. When other green creatures notice Carter, they begin fire until one of them instructs the others to halt. This towering green extraterrestrial with four arms greets Carter by laying down his sword and gun. There is a linguistic barrier, like with the Apaches, but the two manage to provide their names. Tars Tarkas is the Jeddak or tribal leader of the Green Man. Tarkas recognizes Carter as a foreigner and urges him to leap again. Carter seizes the opportunity to charge Tarkas' weapons, but he is defeated before he can fight. Tarkas waves off the rest of his crew once more, ordering them to spare Carter. They take Carter to their home in the remains of an old city, collecting the hatchlings and murdering the unhatched eggs. 
Deja Thoris is preparing a speech at the royal palace of Helium. Tardosmers, the Jeddak of Helium, enters with an entourage squabbling. They discuss that the Zodanga are winning by destroying even the strongest chips of Helium. Zodanga has a new kind of weapon. Deja shows a gadget that creates a feeble blue light, which she calls the Ninth Ray and believes is the source of their adversary Zodanga's new power. As the entourage mulls over the options, one of them, a disguised Thern, secretly zaps the gadget, causing it to fail. Tardos recognizes that this ability has the potential to level the battlefield, but they did not have the time to do more study on this odd blue light. He dismisses the gathering and informs Deja that in order to resolve the battle, she must marry Sabdan. Deja is heartbroken. She realizes that the wedding is unlikely to halt Zodangan development, and that once wedded, she would be unable to continue her studies. Carter is terrified and out of his depth by this point, and he is mistreated by the other Tharks in the city. They have no idea what kind of entity he is, and his lack of verbal understanding brands him as an animal or a baby in their eyes. As a result, he is thrown in with the newborns. The infants are released to the throng, and whomever succeeds to catch one becomes the parent of the hatchling. Carter is given to Sola, a female that the other Tharks appear to despise, especially another female named Sarkoger. Unfortunately, Tarkas has recovered and is wearing the medallion, and Carter knows the medallion is the only way out. Immediately after Sola frees Carter, he tries to take the medallion from Tarkas, but he is stopped by Tal Hayus and he asks to kill him. Tarkas defends Carter again. Carter is cleaned and placed in a pit to rest with other newborns. Sola pours a drink into Carter's mouth. Now he can speak and understand the local language. Back in Tarkville, Carter now has a protector in the form of Woola, a large, wide-mouthed, low-to-the-ground monster who is extremely fast and insists on following Carter like a dog no matter how high or far he hops. Carter is irritated because he is attempting to locate Tars Tarkas in order to get the medallion, but Wool is able to catch up with him and make enough commotion to derail Carter's plans. Carter accidentally enters a Thark party, and Woola comes in and rudely interrupts the gathering. Woola and his owner, Sola, were beaten by the enraged Tharks. Carter, enraged, leaps in to halt the beating, accidentally killing a Thark and demonstrating his ability to jump large distances. The Tharks regard Carter as a new weapon, but they are furious at Sola for allowing him to go. The next day, they bring her for her mistake in front of Carter, who watches in horror as the Tharks tell her that her next transgression would result in death since she has transgressed so many times that there is no place on her skin for additional marks. When a sentry warns of a flying craft, the Tharks seek shelter. Two red flag battleships pursue a blue flag battleship in the skies. The Tharks are betting who will win the battle. They close in on each other for boarding parties and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Tarkas uses a telescope to see the battle and informs Carter that the Zodangans are attacking the Heliumites. Deja Thoris tries to flee the ship, then falls and hangs several hundred feet aloft. Carter recognizes her as human and rushes to her aid. With his ability to jump large distances, he rescues the girl and begins to protect her only for her to demonstrate her own fighting prowess. Carter enters the battle and destroys the enemy ship, but the blue ship of Helium still crashes. Further, fighting with enemies, Sabdan enters into battle with him. At the same time, the Tharks begin to help Carter and Zidang retreats. Tars Tarkas awards Carter his daughter Sojit, or right arms, and offers him Deja Thoris as a gift. Tars Tarkas' opponent Tulhayus, a warrior with a broken tusk, watches with rage. Carter is reminded of Powell and declines the post, but Tarkas argues that if Carter declines, Tarkas will be unable to save Deja's life. Carter hesitantly accepts and quickly finds himself deflecting everyone's questions about his skill. Deja wants to learn how to leap like Carter, but she believes the ability is due to Carter's distinct bone density, and hence it is not a talent she or anyone else can master. Tarkas suspects she is attempting to obtain a new weapon for helium and advises Carter against it. Carter only wishes to return home. He attempts to describe his home to Deja, but she believes he is either mad or lying because he portrays an environment that hasn't been here for thousands of years. She assumes he is a Thern based on his earnestness, which leads to a discussion on astronomy and eventually the realization that Carter is from Earth, which she names Yasum, but is now on Mars, which she calls Barsoom. If there is a means to travel across planets, the Therns will most likely know how to do it. 
Despite Sola's efforts, Carter and Deja Thoris approach a cave that is said to be a temple of the goddess and her servants, the Thurns. Deja analyzes some old symbols, but the three are apprehended by the Tharks for entering the temple. Tarkas is angry at Carter that they broke the rules and now Sola will be responsible for showing the way to the temple. Since this was the last warning for Sola, she will now be executed. Then Carter realizes that Sola is Tarka's daughter. According to the customs of the Tharks, there is no concept of personal children. All children are children of the tribe. Tarka's, at considerable personal danger, assists them all in escaping. Sola, Carter, and Deja Thoris travel to the Ias's river to investigate the temple mystery, bringing the medallion with them. Sola cautions Carter along the way that Deja Thoris is leading them wrong. When confronted, she reveals they were on their way to Helium, and an angry Carter decides to desert her, realizing she may have been manipulating him in order to convert him into her new weapon. He rejects Deja's appeals until she eventually acknowledges she has a personal stake in the war because she is the Helium Princess who is about to be married off to the Zodangan Prince and may be slain. Carter persuades her that he needs time and that they should first see this. The river is a pilgrimage route. Individuals who have sinned or lived too long follow the river in order to terminate their life and enter paradise. Sol almost follows them after witnessing what appear to be Tharks sailing away and bodies on the ground, but Carter stops her. They discover an inverted pyramid structure up the twisting river. Carter jumps up, taking Deja with him. Carter and Deja Thoris walk in when the gate opens, and the solar system is shown in dazzling blue visuals thanks to the medallion. Deja Thoris recognizes the blue light isn't supernatural, but rather created by machines. It's the ninth ray, the same blue ray she's been studying and that the enemy has been employing as a weapon. They also discover that Carter's presence on Mars is most likely the result of a replica of himself being transmitted from Earth to Mars. Outside, an army of Tharks is on its way, led by Mod Ai Shang. He is intrigued by the stranger who is becoming involved in the fights and plans to put his skills to the test. Carter and the two women scramble up the mountain. As the hordes approach, Carter orders the others to evacuate, despite Deja Thoris' protests. He stays behind to battle the advancing army, with only Wola to assist him. He is reminded of the tragedy of war and seeing his dead wife and kid in a burning farmhouse while killing many. Carter is finally defeated, just as a helium warship arrives above to put an end to the fighting. Tardosmers and Sabden board the ship. Sabden gives his sword as a token of confidence to Deja Thoris and begs her to marry him. Deja Thoris almost murders him anyhow, but she stops herself and orders that the injured Carter be taken to Zodanga to be cured. Carter awakens in a secure room. He initially believes he is in helium, but the red-clad soldiers chuckle. As he reflects on being in enemy territory, a guy clothed in blue approaches us and informs him that he has arrived in Zodanga. Kentos Khan is the guy who provides orders to increase Carter's protection. Once near enough, he says to Carter to take him prisoner, but Carter is too bewildered, and an agitated Kentos walks Carter away from the guards while pretending to be held hostage. They leap to a nearby tower. Deja Thoris is dressed to the nines inside. She dismisses everyone in the room after thanking Kintos for bringing Carter to her. She begs Carter once more to battle by her side. He declines once more, and she notices the wedding band on his finger. Deja Thoris teaches him the magic words that would send him back to Earth, knowing that his heart belongs to another lady but now knowing that the other woman is dead. Outside, Zodangan guards demand admittance, but Carter has fled by the time the door opens. Deja Thoris and the others depart, but the matron of the chamber reappears, then goes again, and Carter is seen in a ceiling recess. He departs, and she immobilizes him with a blue beam before transforming into Ma Ai Shang, the Thern commander. He compels Carter to accompany him, and describes how the Therns are dealing with Mars destruction. Ma Ai Shang, card in a wedding procession traffic bottleneck, transforms into a Zodangan cop and escorts Carter outdoors. Then Shang transforms into an old woman as they watch Deja Thoris parade down the street. Mod Ai Shang tells Carter, almost casually, that after the marriage, Deja Thoris and anybody else who knows about the Ninth Ray would be slain. Walking through the streets of Zodanga, Mod Ai Shang tells Carter that they are ancient immortal creatures' therns. They exist on many planets, including on Earth. With the help of high technology and knowledge, they have always controlled the course of history on different planets. 
Wool appears out of nowhere, manages to destroy Shang's confinement, and Carter flees on the light flyer. He crashes lands near Seoul after a thrilling pursuit. Knowing he cannot face the Zodangan troops or the Therns alone, he returns to Tarkville and requests their assistance. Carter and Sol arrive safely, but the Thark stops Carter in jail, where he meets a chain Tars Tarkas. Tarkas informs Carter that he was deposed by one Tusk Tall Hyus. Tarkas is outraged when he discovers that Carter brought Sola back and would have murdered him if he hadn't been beaten and severely weakened. The convicts are subsequently led to a gigantic Colosseum and forced to battle one, then two, giant white apes. Sola creates a commotion in the stands, allowing Carter to kill the first and then the second beast. As the Tharks applaud him on, he dares Tall Hyus to play Jeddak. Carter dispatches him with a single swift swing. He now has an army eager to fight for him as the Jeddak of the Tharks. He brings them back to Zodanga in order to avert the wedding. When they arrive, the city is deserted. Everyone has gone to Helium. Tars Tarkas smacks Carter above the head since they will not be able to make it to the wedding in time. Carter gestures to the airships, but the Tharks refuse to let him fly, so he sets off on his own in a light flyer. As he approaches, Zodangan guards see him, but because he's flying a Zondangan plane, they think he's part of their scheme and allow him through. Carter bursts in just as the wedding ceremony is about to end. Deja Thoris is overjoyed to see him, but it is too late for the signal has already been sent. Zodangans resume attacking the Heliumites, and Model e Shang and his blue beam appear unbeatable once more. A massive light cruiser also smashes in, and the Tharks exit to follow their leader. They join the Heliumite army to combat the Zodangans. Madai Shang flees, but Carter retrieves the medallion. Sabdan is slain during the conflict by the blue gizmo he so adored. Carter takes his wedding wing and asks Deja to marry him now that the urgent threat of Zodanga has passed. Helium and Thark both celebrate when she agrees. Carter becomes restless that night and walks out of the room. He throws the medallion down the canyon. As he returns to the bedchamber, the guard praises him before grabbing him and transforming into Ma Tai Shang, sending Carter back to the cave in Arizona. Carter awakens stiff, dusty, and beardless. The colonel is a skeleton, and the riches and Thern corpse have vanished. Carter's story continues as he recognizes there must be more Therns on the planet and spends the next 10 years searching for another medallion. He seemed to have discovered something in the Orkneys. He constructs a crypt on his home in order to return to Mars while leaving his body safe on Earth. Nephew Edgar will be tasked with keeping him safe since the Therns are expected to assault his body maybe immediately as Edgar is reading the journal. Fearful, Edgar rushes to the crypt, unaware that he is being pursued. He figures out the password to enter and unlocks the door after a few anxious seconds, but the crypt is empty. Aetherne emerges behind Edgar and is ready to murder him when he gets shot. Edgar turns around to find Carter standing outside with a revolver. Carter says that he took a medicine that caused him to seem dead, and Edgar learns that he was only bait to lure out a thern and allow Carter to collect the medallion he needs to return to Deja Thoris. Carter corrects him, noting that Edgar will play an essential role in protecting Carter's body on Earth when he returns to his actual home, Mars. Carter enters the crypt with the medallion from the deceased thern, lies down, and recites the word to return to. Barsoom. Subscribe my channel, leave your likes, and turn on notifications to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching.